These first few photographs provide a brief overview of the various clinical and laboratory steps required to prepare for the final fabrication of complete dentures. A disposable plastic stock compression tray is used to make a preliminary impression. Preliminary casts aid in diagnosis and the fabrication of custom impression trays. A border molded custom tray is used to make a final impression. Monophase Aquasil is the final wash material. Master casts are fabricated and ready for recording the patient's maxillomandibular relationship. A record is made at the proposed vertical dimension of occlusion. A face bow is used to mount the maxillary cast to the articulator to duplicate the patient's arc of opening and closure. The mounting of the mandibular cast is completed using the record. The cast and articulator are prepared for submission to the dental laboratory. A work authorization guides the technician in fabricating trial dentures for evaluation in the patient's mouth. Aesthetics, phonetics, and the maxillomandibular relationship at the proposed vertical dimension of occlusion are assessed and finalized in the trial denture prior to dental laboratory submission for processing and finishing. The trial dentures are removed from the articulator and prepared for flasking. The process of flasking will create a split mold. The stone mixture is allowed to set completely before the next step. The flask is placed in boiling water to soften the wax and facilitate separating the flask halves. Both the wax and record base are removed and discarded. All residual wax must be re carefully removed and thoroughly cleaned using this method. Detergent is used to complete this step and then thoroughly rinsed using clean boiling water. While the flask halves are still warm, a separator is applied. All coat is sometimes referred to as tinfoil substitute. This split mold is now allowed to cool completely prior to the next step. The denture teeth are cleaned with monomer prior to the trial packing procedure. Polymethyl methacrylate resin is mixed and allowed to form a dough stage which the dental laboratory technician carefully monitors prior to initial trial packing. The acrylic resin is placed in the flask cap containing the denture teeth and a plastic sheet is used to prevent the material from adhering to the master cast in the other flask half. The closed flask is placed in a hydraulic press for initial closure to allow excess resin 
to extrude. The flask is removed, reopened, and excess acrylic is removed. If voids or deficiencies are noted during this initial trial packing, the excess acrylic resin is used to correct those areas. With the excess acrylic resin removed, the flask is again closed. And now, the pressure is increased to 1,500 psi. Excess acrylic resin is again removed prior to the final flask closure. The Texas Dental Practice Acts require patient identification to be placed in removable prosthesis. Therefore, the patient's name is incorporated into the denture base as illustrated. The flask is now ready for final closure and the pressure is increased to 3000 psi. The flasks are pla placed, placed in a press and readied for processing. The flasks are placed in a curing tank filled with cold water. The long curing process is normally accomplished overnight, so they are cured and ready for finishing the next day. The flasks are removed and allowed to cool to room temperature before the deflasking process begins. The stone mold is removed from the flask. And the processed denture is recovered from the mold with master cast still intact. The dentures are returned to the articulator to correct for any laboratory processing errors. The denture is now recovered from the master cast. A thin layer of acrylic resin flash formed by the land area can be seen. The flash will be removed during the finishing process. The flash acts as an important guide for the technician to preserve the denture border created in the final impression and subsequent master casts. The denture has been carefully trimmed and is now ready for further finishing. The circled area shows small pieces of stone which remained adhered to the denture base and must be removed prior to proceeding. Walnut shell pieces are used under high air pressure as an abrasive to dislodge the stone without damaging the denture base. A variety of acrylic burrs may be used to further refine denture contours. Abrasive rubber points and wheels may be used to begin finishing what is referred to as the cameo surface of the complete denture. 
The denture base is now ready for final polishing. Pumice is used in an, as an initial polishing agent followed by finer abrasives to create a high gloss surface. Only the cameo surface has been adjusted, finished, and polished. The intaglio surface, the surface in contact with the edentulous ridge, remains untouched. Adjustment of the intaglio surface is a clinical procedure accomplished at the time of denture placement. The denture is now ready for surface disinfection and is, in, and is sealed in a plastic bag. The denture is returned to the clinician for placement.